Let's pray. Om Jaya Shri Ganesh, Om Jaya Shri Ganesh, Om Jaya Shri Ganesh. Om Jaya Shri Ganesh, Om Jaya Shri Ganesh, Om Jaya Shri Ganesh. Om Jaya Shri Ganesh, Om Jaya Shri Ganesh, Om Jaya Shri Ganesh. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Sacha Sala Brahma, Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama. Om Guru Bhuha Swada, Tapitur Varya, Bhargo Devo Syati Mahi, Diyana Prachodayate. Om Triyam Bhakam Yajja Amhage, Sunani Pushi Vartana, Om Sutam Bharatanam Vishnam Sashivarnam Chatur Bhujam Rasana Vadanam Diyayet Sarvavinam Pashantaye Arda Janana Padmarnam Gajanana Mahar Nisham Anekadantanam Bhaktanam Yekarantaru Bhakmahe Om Namo Bhagavate Vishaje Guru Venturiya Prabharanchaya Tata Gata Yaharate Sanyak Sambudaya Tajata Om Vishaje Vishaje Maha Vishaje Vishaje Viracha Samuntateswa Om Shanti 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 Om Kritanya Shriya Ijiva Karuna Yana Chara Learning the finger bending, the mudra. Can you do this? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't count. Okay? You just do this with one hand and then with the other. And if you can do this, you can touch your thumb. Okay? And then with the little fingers, you join them inside so you can do the mudra. Okay? There are a lot of people who start and they say, I just can't do it. Well, if you can't do this, you can do the mudra. If you can't do this, you should not try. It's going to hurt your fingers. Okay? Take it easy. So even in the long practice, even in a long practice period, we're not going to hold the mudra in the complete way for the entire time. The moment you start to feel a tension, you have to release it. At one point, it's just whatever is still holding when you shake it with no effort in the hands. And instead of being there, you're going to go here and eventually rest it. Okay? So we can start a mudra real fervent and devoted to the practice. And eventually we relax and you can bring it there also because with this mudra, it's good to do the horizontal at this level. But eventually you just relax it. Okay? And you just, you're focusing on the dharma of responsibility. So, as much as Rin is to embrace the truth, Kyo is to embrace your responsibility. Good enough? We'll go with that. Release the mudra. Would you write on the board the mantra? Om Mishanaya Yantraya Swa Did anyone ever ordain evil? And uh, to the yeah, okay. I wanted to be clear that evil will never be ordained as anything. He will become more strong, more powerful, more influential, and more radiant, learning to do it on his own without the masters helping him directly like, like us. Okay? I mean, sometimes it's not because you're weak that you need the masters to help. It's just the most beneficial for you to stream in community. He's a pillar. He's a strong one. He's, uh, if he would just get his occult power back, he would just really impress everyone, he has the power to go through hell and laugh. So, 
sarcastically or honestly, he still does laugh, okay? And, and I just want to make it clear, he's one of those who will gain more benefits by receiving no titles. I mean, no one cares about the titles here pretty much. He doesn't care about the titles. He doesn't want the attention. But in terms of power, if someone ever says, oh, Evo has been there for 28 years, no ordination. <laughs> oh, you can't do this. You're not a chariot. 28 years, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're, we're good with this. You know, you're agreeing with this. All right, good. Just in case one day it changes because it was going to, <laughs> will be clairvoyant helps guiding your students. His girlfriend, ordain her everything she wants. She needs the help, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to humiliate you, I see it worked. <clears throat> you contemplate it. I would like everyone to make the mudra and the neighbors, you look at the mudras of the other, and if you see someone is really out of the correct way, you tell them, okay? Just in case the newbies... <laughs> so he goes to this guy, who started about at the same time as you. <laughs> so everyone's got it, everyone validated the others, they, they get the hang of it, and you understand if they lose the fingers, okay? The two littles are inside, okay? Not out, but inside, okay? Because this, this, the, these two here, the pinky is the mind. Not necessarily what you think, but how your mental situation is. And it, it concerns your identity, your conditionings, your reflexes, your level of creativity is level, okay? So a lot of aspects of, you know, when you have an intuition, you say, my pinky told me, okay? It's, it's that thing. The ring finger is how you feel. Not only your ability to feel, but what are the feelings, your actual emotional situation. It's, it's like this broad emotional reality, okay? So we are doing introspection <clears throat> while we, the index is pushing out the power, experience is taking charge of it, okay? So with the wisdom you gain, the major finger, you are submitted your power to the wisdom that you've gained while observing inside what's going on. So in other words, responsibility. What am I doing now? The introspection. And still you use your power but you use it in the context of wisdom. The wisdom finger is binding your freedom to, to these conditions where your practice of virtue is what dominates your power. Okay, that's what it means. That's what the mudra means. <clears throat> Care to share what you were laughing about or enjoying? Just that he started coaching and probably before me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. I mean, there's no competition there. I mean, they don't care. Yeah, all right. But it was funny, yeah. See, time doesn't matter. You can't count the two years that he wasn't really working on it. You're all good for the mudra? You're good for the mantra? Isha Naya. All the wisdom, all the way I learn how to behave in this world, how to manage myself in my causalities. Okay, Ishanaya. Ishanaya means to behave with diligence. If we just go word for word, if we just copy paste in the Sanskrit dictionary, okay? What is diligent? Diligent means in charge. But in charge while you make sure it is the most appropriate way. What is the most appropriate way? Is it following the laws, a code book, your conditioning, or your training in virtue? And that is why we do personal growth. So that the Ishanaya expand in the wisest possible experience you've discovered so far. This is what will dominate your, your actions. My actions are submitted to what I really find wise. Therefore, compassionate, charitable, forgiving, strong, willing, faithful and prudent 
humble and simple. Yantra is tool. Rantrai, ran, now it's Yantraya, although there's no verb, we put a grammatical chord, but that's how the mantra was built. And I understand why they do this. Sometimes we put a ya even though in Sanskrit it's, it's not grammatically correct. Because we are talking about the, the dynamics, even though it's not the relationship like Om Namah Shiva Ya, the Ya means that Shiva is the one saluted. Om Priti Vidakuni Devi Ya. Why do we say Devi Ya? There's a Ya the Buddha Devi, although there's no verb. Well, it's the same kind of Ya as sometimes there's no verb, but the Ya is the reference to the dynamics of the components. So it's not built on the grammar, but on the, dy the dynamics of Bija mantra. Okay? Just in case you review your Sanskrit and say, there's a grammar mistake. No, there's a different way to write it. Okay? But yes, it's not how we speak Sanskrit, it's how we invoke mantras. The mantras, even the original ones, have a lot of variety in how it doesn't specifically fit in the grammar. But once understood, it, it produces more results, so that's what we do. Okay? We try to be careful when we create mantras to make sure to not make something with mistakes or you know, bad consequences. So, in this case, Om Ishanaya Yantraya, you see? So, so like the Mahajriya, it's not the Mahajra, it's the Mahajriya, which is the, the name of Brahma that we use, it's not the Mahajra, it's the Mahajriya. Okay? Mahajra means the great field, Mahajriya is to dwell in it, that's the Brahma name that we use, the idea that we are into it, and that is grammatically correct. So, it's not just the tools, it's how you use them. I'm, I'm throwing in technical information because I'm allowing the energy to start. You can feel that something's happening, so I'm just allowing it before we do practice. We're going to practice for 50 minutes, so if you really need to go pee, you do it now, or, or you just went five minutes ago, or, I mean, if it hurts you to go during the practice, okay? But I'm gonna wait another two minutes. So we, energy is preparing, just keep it, in, keep it in mind. Responsibility, seriousness. Your determination oh. to personal growth. You're not supposed to talk. This is not a break. We're in class. People are going to pee or they're studying class. <coughs> but not a break. <coughs> Where the energy is being prepared. Shanaya Yantraya Swaha. Can you imagine the whole of your life and the whole of your world in a single instance, in a single thought? process. So of course there won't be anything specific, but if I say my life or my reality, my world, okay, what we call the swaloka, okay, the personal world, which is, which is the samsara loka, which is where you are, but when we say the swaloka is everything that immediately concerns you. So conceive your swaloka, conceive your world, okay? So where you work, your bank accounts, your relationships that are currently active, everything's going on now. We're not talking about the past except the memories you still have. We're not talking about your future plans but the fact that you are now having them but not what will happen in the future. We're talking really in the immediate reality that you objectively grasp. What you cultivated by red. Okay, my reality is now is that. And you, you don't want to change it. You don't want to resolve it. You don't want to make it better or worse. You don't want to affect it. Eventually we will. Further. But in this course, I want you to conceive what is your instant 
of divine incarnation. What is part of your dynamics? So you contemplate it. Don't say the mantra if I say it. It's my influence. I want you to do your work. Om Ishanaya Yantraya Swaha. Again, the Swaloka is all your world. Because at some point, I will say, conceive or imagine your Swaloka or invoke it. And in one shot, you will invoke in a single instance, in five seconds, there will be no time to review the components of your life. You'll just say, okay, all my life, and it will be there. But I don't want you to blindly just say, oh, everything in my life, and not have been taught about it before. So I'm asking you now, what is your world? What affects you? The houses you, you go through, your friends, the families, the products you purchase, the kind of clothing you wear, everything that concerns your immediate reality. At one point, I will ask you to think about that. Am I correct to assume that you were the last one at the background? No, there's three more. There's three more? All right. We just want to wait for that. So we're talking about, okay? And for the few who weren't there, I will repeat that kind of dialogue. Very short, although. The Swaloka, or the personal reality, is, um, if you remember um, when you did transmigration yesterday, and your streams of consciousness go where your mind goes, so everywhere your streams of consciousness still go and affect all of these places in this world, this is where your swallow comes. So it, it's your immediate reality. Get this? Just keep contemplating it. You can even say swallow come. I mean, it's, there, it's not a city of power. It's a city of embracing. Swallow come. Uh, it doesn't say acceptance, but it brings it. Yes, it is a city, as much as a description. Swaloka. Uh, it's not a universal transmigration, so usually we just do, do Om or Mahima in like this emancipated, immense transmigration. But when we when we practice Swaloka, it's it's this is one of the minor things we do for a few days, and that's it. It's not anything to charge, all you would do is become more aware of whoever you affect and you would affect everyone even more. <laughs> Maybe you don't want that, okay? You can exaggerate Swaloka practice to the point where you would hinder someone else's freedom supernaturally. So the goal is to practice it to reveal what you are hiding from your own knowledge of your reality. But it's not a city to train to gain any power. Unless you're a control freak and you want to dominate everything in your reality, and then you will also pile up the karma for each time it deprives someone else of their freedom. So don't do that. But it's extremely useful. It's like a knife. It's super awesome to have a knife, but if you do it to give a massage to someone, it won't be appropriate. <laughs> but to cut your steak, it's kind of making everything easier, you know? So it's just this, this thing that you use for a specific purpose because it does help you access your world immediately instead of over a long time. Okay. So that's why we do the Swaloka practice. Just to to feel that we can access our world. Okay. And that comes usually naturally when we practice just incarnation, embracing reality. That happens naturally. Now we're gonna invoke it in a practice so I have to teach it. Otherwise I wouldn't. There are things I will never teach. Not because they have to be hidden, but because I, you know, there's always something more useful. Oh my God, we're going to lose this wisdom. No, no, we're not going to lose wisdom. It was meant to disappear or, I mean, it was not efficient enough to persist in the next wave of consciousness of humanity. That's it. For the sake of anthropology, there are things that I'm just going to say sometimes and you know, it's going to stick because it's going to stick. So the Swaloka, the way I use it, is just to get immediate access to my streams of consciousness. And it's all of them at the same time. It's pretty funky, actually.
The magic is just like snakes everywhere, streams, it's just it's fine. Swaloka. Just focus on it. Access to your world. I mean, it's the world of everyone else. It's this world. It's what concerns you. The personal. What's my personal reality? It, it includes your lies, your dreams. <laughs> you know, yeah. Everything that you don't know is real. It's still in there. The Swaloka is everywhere that your streams of consciousness go and touch and affect. My Swaloka affects hundreds of thousands of people because of my YouTube channel, because of the teachers that I taught. Mildly, but distant, a lot. Okay. The priority, the strongest bonds is like your family members, uh, your best friends, your job, your bank account. Your TV is part of your swaloka if you watch it every day. Even if you don't watch it, it's still in your living room or whatever. So we're expecting two more people? Seriously. Do you see anyone missing here? Mm -hmm. We're good? <clears throat> oh, they left like forever. Oh, uh, yeah, I think it's like business, they have to work and stuff like that. Yeah. We're Monday, yeah? Work schedules. I know it's hot. I'm going to bring the, the pool soon. I'm going to fly Gedeka soon, not now. Just sitting in the Swaloka. Good. Let go of this. Breathe. And shake it off gently. When I say shake it off, it's like if you were doing this with your hand to shake off water, but you do this morally and philosophically inside with the Dharma, look. Just let it go, okay? <laughs> Not violently, but just let it drop. At one point, during this teaching, I will leave and come back. Just keep going to practice. And I do. Just not aware I'll have to do it, so I'll tell you in advance. <coughs> not through clairvoyance and supernatural means that I know I'll have to leave. Through appropriate management and organization. <laughs> Okay, I'll get a signal, I have to leave, okay? <laughs> Contemplate for yourself, I genuinely desire to be fully responsible of my entire reality. Everything I have accepted revealed by Rin, I want to be responsible of that factual reality that I live in. Everything that concerns me, I desire the humility and the simplicity to embrace it as my responsibility. And the more honest you are with it, the more even nature will rain when you need it and stop when you need it. When you are fully responsible of power, that power becomes infallible. When you're in denial of your power, that power is not available and you find yourself to be a weak human in a cage of flesh, submitted to the suffering of your life. As when you decide to fully embrace through the Rin level of evolution, 
everything that I am living is a fact. That's, it's, that's what's happening now. No dreams, no lies, no fantasy, no fleeing. And then the step of cure. And all of this that I'm aware of, and all of the reality I chose to embrace even at the subconscious level that I'm not aware, I choose to endorse the responsibility that is mine. And it also means that I'm free from the responsibilities that is not mine. According to the universal rules of freedom of each, what concerns me, concerns me. What doesn't, doesn't. And if I do not have the discernment to know which is which, I will learn. But I choose to be responsible. And a fully responsible person never takes someone else's responsibility. Things are as they are, exactly as they are. And if you appear to take someone else's responsibility, it is only to protect the freedom of everyone for everyone's happiness. Therefore, you were responsible for what you could do about it. <clears throat> so just keep going. Just keep contemplating all that. Make the mudra. Make it a bit firm. And pointing up. A level of, you know, between your chakra between your solar plexus and the throat, you know, somewhere where your arms end. And be serious about the desire of full responsibility beyond even what I realize it means. I'm not becoming responsible only when I agree. I'm responsible when I am. Regardless I, if I agree or not. My opinion about my responsibility does not have any value in the same. It's a severe practice. And it is the greatest deliverance. Well, the greatest deliverance until the next one, of course. Step by step, I say this for every level. <laughs> It's just a figure of speech. I'm poetic right now. <coughs> Breathe. <laughs> Mantra. <clears throat> Om Shanaya Yantraya Swaha. Om Shanaya Yantraya Swaha. A longer pause. Om Shanaya Yantraya Swaha. Om Shanaya Yantraya Swaha. Om Shanaya Yantraya Swaha 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 Put your right foot on the ground Om Shanaya Yantraya Swaha 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 Right now you relax and now you can manage your legs and feet how you are more comfortable you can relax the mudra if you want Keep the state of mind. I was just wanting to promote more grounding while we were doing the affirming stage. And you recite it with voice as often as, as you feel comfortable to. At your speed, whispered or aloud. 
Omission I am try as well. Omission I am try as well. When you permit yourself a contemplative practice, try not to transcend too fast. Relax the fingers to be comfortable. Shantaya Yantraya Swaha Shanaya Yantra Yaswana Om Ishanaya Yantra Yaswana Om Ishanaya Yantra Yaswana Om Ishanaya Yantrai Swaha Obishanaya Obishanaya Yantrai Swaha Deep breath, everyone. Stay silent and contemplative. Do not use the word swaloka, just in, invoke its principle. Look at how I do it, okay? My mudra is tight again. I bring it to where my hips are. Close but comfortable, like at the second chakra. And now I will push this sense of responsibility through my entire swaloka. Everything that concerns me. I affirm. Om Ishanaya Yantraya Swaha. And you have pushed forward during the entire recitation. And you relax it. Actually, we're going to have another way of doing it. We're going to pull away so slow that over seven to nine recitation, we will have done the pull. A bit like when we were pulling Rin, <coughs> now we're pushing. The power I pulled in Rin, I cause in my life that I am responsible. 
of what I agree or not. If it concerns me, it does. If it doesn't, I am liberated from it. And that's the cool part. The less cool part is what concerns me, I'm gonna have to face it, okay? So yes, I now invoke that I want to live my karma to clean it. Om Ishanaya Yantraya Swaha 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 Om Ishanaya Do it as long as you feel the pull. Seven to nine rotation is good. A breath in while you pull back. Relax. Don't pull your karma back. Just relax, alright? <laughs> Did you see or feel that power go into your streams of consciousness? Yeah! That's how you become a good Matutsushi. Om Shanaya Yantraya Swaha. Om Shanaya Yantraya Swaha. Now we still have oh, half an hour to go. Would you please close the camera? All the teachings related to the practice have been done. So. You're not taking what is inside you, that responsible feeling, that decision to stay virtuous regardless. You're not putting it out. That's not what you're doing with the push. It is still inside you and you are streaming it, radiating it, so it becomes a flow. But it still comes from inside you and it's still there. You're not getting rid of that like I'm pushing it out. I'm in a continuous stream of consciousness in all the streams that con that concern me, all my swaloka, okay? And we do it now. Om practice, the less it's going to feel like 50 minutes. The more it's just going to be like a moment. We get used to practice more, okay? Now if you realize the difference in this teaching of Kojien relating to many other contemplation, the first time I taught it was technical. It has some personal growth components, learning the basics of emotional integration, transmigration, the basics. That was many years ago for most of you. And then I added more philosophy, also more personal growth. And it expanded the meaning of each stages of evolution. So the constant in this way I'm teaching Kujian now, there's see, even the, the, the advanced student that's been studying with me for years, there's always one thing that I teach. Like with, with Ren, there's something that you had not expected. And with Kyo, there's something you had not expected. Because I told you I was going to get you to a glimpse of Buddha, so I'm teaching Kujian in this world. 
It's not about the highest Zen philosophy. It's in this world. It's by teaching the implications of applied Kujian that you will reach the Buddha thinking. Cool, eh? <laughs> because the Buddha is not about you. That would be egocentric, therefore not enlightened. The Buddha is global perspective. It's uninterested, and it's factual, simple, it's right there. That's why I'm teaching Fujian. Applied in this world. Nice. Huh? It's cool to get something new like that. But you have to admit it's extremely wise to practice Kujin for ourselves and to practice as a tool of personal growth and empowerment to give us trust and courage to get out of depression, to learn it as a basic techniques, to learn it as just to charge energies, the way we do it the first time. Just the books, maybe a little video, a teacher guiding you the basic things. And you learn it and something happens and you, you discover energies, consciousness. We don't rush you immediately in the, in the hardest challenges of when is it the time really to lie? Never. But you say the truth in the way that people will judge. So why do you deal with that? You know, the hard, the hard ways to deal with this society that is not awakened and enlightened. And usually, most of the time, the way is just to be simple there and accept the things as they are. The rin. You know, what do you fight to not accept this is life now? Why am I dreaming? Why am I fantasizing? Why am I dramatizing? And why did I believe it was mine? Huh? That thing about possession, about the rin. What caused me to believe that thing was mine? That lover, that TV, that money. Because when it went away, it hurt me because I, I believed it was mine. I mean, the first time you learn Kuji and there's no way your, your, your human will conceive even what I mean by that. After a lot of personal growth, you can understand that you can have a physical possession, a relationship, a certain amount of wealth, and understand that it's not yours. The, the, the idea of property does not exist in this world. But just that philosophy is incompatible with our society. What I teach in the behavior in society is that we do have a structure that protects for property and the responsible to weigh about it, to go about it, is to make sure that these laws of our property are respected. Because it seriously is the best way to bring happiness in this world. If you teach everyone that the concept of property, physical property, does not exist, we're just going to go to the dark ages again. Because everyone who does not have compassion will invade your property, which is not yours. And it, no, the Buddha said it's not, <coughs> no property. No property, yeah. He also said you should have compassion and give your property to the other. Now, you're going to have to take your stake it and you know, misuse the Dharma. Happens with all philosophies and religions and whatever. We're not religious, but some people would think at it that way. So for that reason, you have to live inside knowing that there's no concept of property, no concept of relationship, and no concept of identity while you embrace your possessions, your relationships, and use your identity. Yeah. Because this is the Dharma of this world. It's your karma to be born here, and you function at this level because you accepting the properties, the relationships, and the identity is what makes the most people happy now. You, the others, stability. Until the great majority of people have compassion, but not this fake compassion that accepts injustice. Compassion that is really to kill someone to avoid more deaths. Do you understand? Compassion that really thinks in terms of the whole. I mean, I often get comments that come from the, the wannabe Buddhists, who are not Buddhists, but all they studies is the, the, the Tibetan Buddhists. I mean, 
there's a lot of Tibetan Buddhists that understand the true sense of compassion sometimes is harsh and severe. Yeah, I think it's Suki who went to study with some of these guys and they, they explained to her, yeah, sometimes what we are taught, compassion is not what we teach to the world. They don't accept it. Was that you who told me that once? That you studied with, uh, or, or you went to see a conference with monks and you had a conversation? All right, well, I remember it's you, but anyway, it doesn't matter. One of my advanced students, whoever it was, in which reality it happened. <laughs> <laughs> went to see the Tibetan Buddhist, and he says, well, you know that thing about compassion, the way you teach it? The way I learned from the Mahadriya, which is just another tradition, is that sometimes compassion is just to say the harsh thing to someone because they need to grow up. And the monk says, oh yeah, in the temple, behind closed doors, compassion is what promotes happiness. You know, behaviors must be corrected in a way to reach this point of true compassion, which is like a parent has compassion even while they scold their children. Do you understand? But if we tell this to the world, they're going to use compassion to start to hate each other, and they're not going to get compassion. So we have to start with loving kindness, which is not the true interpretation of compassion. Okay? So yes, it's, this is a Kyo-related teaching. And in your application of compassion, the way you manage property, relationship, identity, you adapt to the karma of your world, society. However, in, in the mind of pure freedom, inside the way you live it, have to nourish that you own nothing, you have no relationship, and your identity is worthless. It has no value. Did I say that you are worthless? Yes, the concept of value is a fraud. If you want to grow your self-esteem, you have not found God. You are either battling for having self-esteem, or you know yourself as rich as the universe. But for a while, I teach people how to build up their self-esteem, because this is what they need to do. They need to grow. All the newbies that meet me, everyone in personal growth, I teach integration, working. Do this so you grow your, your self-esteem, so you become proud of yourself. Because this is what will make the people able to continue the hard task of integrating the basic trials of life. And then you reach a point when self-esteem is a denial of the greatness of God. Because your self-esteem is what's going to hurt you. It's what will make you proud and someone will say, I don't like you, and bam, your self-esteem became a cause of suffering. It's like that. If you have a true absence of self-esteem, that's good. But what we say in society, I have low self-esteem, I mean you actually... We say, I don't have self-esteem, but what you want to say by that is, I actually do have hatred for myself. That's what you mean. That's why for the amount of hatred you have for yourself, that you will not face and heal now. It's impossible. It's buried sometimes when you're newbie. I will say, grow self-esteem. So the two opposites keep you in balance. But the goal is to get rid of the self-hatred so you do not require any form of self-esteem to feel the purity of the center. Until you reach that point, admit it to yourself and work on your self-esteem. I still recommend Shivani, a very advanced student, to work on her self-esteem, to keep it rich, to always compensate the self-hatred that is still stuck there. And as she goes into the liberation of self-hatred, she, on her own, drops some of the self-esteem she has. I don't need to be important. I don't need to be recognized. She does it on her own. Because she's on the middle way. She's balanced and she's autonomous. And that, that's why she's a master. Okay? Cool, huh? It's nice to see it that way. But good. So, expedient me, the story of the Phantom City, as Sakyamuni Buddha explains it in the Lotus Sutra, is, you know, we just have 15 minutes of walk to go to this nice park. And it's a wonderful place. So people go and they see a nice park. And once they are in this nice park, oh, and there's another place even better, but it's an hour walk. Do you trust me? Oh, yeah, you seem to know nice places. The park was nice. Let's go to the walk. But the walk is hard. But after an hour, the park, is, I mean, there's even fruits in the trees that you can eat right there. I mean, wow. Oh, and by the way, if you think these two parks were great, there's another one. But it's... 
so magnificent. Seriously, you didn't bring us to that one? Well, it's a three-hour walk in a steep hill, but it's really worth a shot. And then you start to put more effort and going to an even better place. But if I told you, I will bring you to the most awesome restaurant, but it's a four hour and 15 minute walk in the steep hill, and you say, go fuck yourself, man. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna do this. You, you didn't even prove that you know a good place. You know, you're, it's just you talking. I looked on Google, they say nothing about that place. <laughs> <laughs> so do you understand? The step-by-step the -step experience mean is you teach someone to build self-esteem because it's impossible to resolve the self-hatred. If it's impossible, if it's possible, you just teach them that and that we're done, we move on. And once they have self-esteem, yeah, they love themselves as much as they hate themselves, so it's kind of balanced. So you say, well, okay, I, least I feel better than when I hated myself and didn't love myself also, okay? So it is better, all right. Next time is like a less of that self-hatred and moments of bliss. And at one point is there, okay, now self-esteem is what hurts. So you move on, okay? So that's the, that's the explanation of the Phantom City metaphor. Could also be applied to the, uh, the medicinal herb uh, in the Mahaparinirvana Sutra where we put a, a certain ointment on the nipple of the mother if the milk is bad or if the baby has trouble digesting so the baby is not tempted to go get that milk all the time but after two days when the medicine, medicine worked on the baby you remove that ointment that tastes bad so the baby can go back but he's afraid it hurt before so he tries it again and then oh it's milk again let's do this but now the milk is healthy for the baby okay that's what they did few thousand years ago for medicine so it stayed in the Buddhist tradition so the, the parable of the ointment on the nipple of the mother of the feeding mother is that thing where you would actually put the five precepts to make sure that there are certain things you would not do and then you grow and then you will get severely drunk and lose your consciousness with the master against the precept that says you should never do that but in a controlled environment for the training in supernatural states or, or for discovery that you're stronger than nature. You're not gonna still, you know, in a way we, we don't do this often, but we did this like once or twice. Thrice maybe in El Paso. <laughs> We're not gonna do it this week. So, so that you learn that even when the harshest condition affect your body, you stay virtuous. Because when you get drunk, your inhibitions go away. So if you still are an arrogant asshole inside, it's gonna come out. You know that, man. You don't need explanation. You know, it's, when you're drunk, you comes out. I love you so much. I hate everyone. I mean, I don't feel good. I mean, what you are comes out when you're drunk, just before you start to expulse it. Okay. So that was just teaching, you know, we do, I don't recommend abuses like that because, you know, they hurt. And when the few rare times I involve alcohol in the teaching, I usually teach transmutation before, so you learn to transmute the sickness and the alcohol as it comes in. So, I mean, we go supernatural. But I'm not against taking a little scotch or a glass of wine, you know. I vow to a precept to not intoxicate myself to the point of losing consciousness. It's good, so I just have to learn to be severely indicated and still be fully virtuous. Not betray my precepts. <coughs> oh, fuck it. The precepts are very good when you have no compassion. When you have compassion, the precepts, they're not evil. They're just like, could be misunderstood. I've never seen anything bad come from the precepts. But they could be misunderstood. So are we good with that? Yeah, a little small talk while coming back from a Q practice. There, there, there land. Cool then? Good. It's one o'clock. And you are going to have another class here at 3.30. And just for the sake that your nervous system needs to adapt to what just happened, and that includes even the advanced one, like Ole and Suki, it's not just your nervous system, it's all the streams of consciousness everywhere. They need to adapt. So I'm not going to push another wave of power on you with this one, okay?
because because you're powerful and because that's your screen will just affect everyone that, that involves your consciousness. Okay, so let's keep it easy. But it's part of the training. It's part of the of the settling in of that. It's going to be fun. Okay.